The Cube's live coverage is made possible by funding from Dell Technologies, creating technologies that drive human progress. Hey everyone, it's so good to see you. Welcome back to theCUBE's day two coverage of MWC 23. We are live in Barcelona. Lisa Martin with Dave Nicholson. Dave, we have had no signage of people dropping out. This conference is absolutely jam-packed. There's so much interest in the industry. You've had a lot of interviews this morning. Before we introduce our guests and have a great conversation about the industry and challenges and how they're being solved, what are some of the things that stuck out to you in conversations today? Well, I think the interesting kind of umbrella conversation that seems to be overlapping, you know, overlying everything is this question about open RAN and, uh, and open standards in radio access network technology and, and where the operators of networks and the providers of technology come together to chart a better path forward. Um, a lot of discussion of uh, private 5G networks. Um, it's very interesting, I think I've said this a few times, from a consumer's perspective, we feel like 5G has been with us for a long time. Do. But it's very clear that, this, that we're really at the beginning stages of this. And, and I'm, I'm super excited for our guests that we have here because we're going to be able to talk to an actual operator yes. and hear what they have to say. We've heard a lot of people talking about the cool stuff they build, but we're going to get to hear from someone who actually works with this stuff. Who so. actually built it, absolutely. Please welcome our two guests. We have Ihab Tarazi, CTO and SVP at Dell Technologies and Juan Carlos Garcia, SVP Technology Innovation and Ecosystems at Telefonica. It's great to have you guys on the program. So thank you very much. So the buzz around this conference is incredible. 80,000 plus people, 2,000 exhibitors. It's standing room only. A Lot of opportunity in the industry, a lot of challenges though. Juan Carlos, we'd love to get your perspective on what are some of the industry challenges that Telefonica has faced that your peers are probably facing as well? Well, we have two kinds of challenges, no? One is um, a business challenge, I would say, that we may find in other industries, like profitability and growth, and I will talk about it. And the second challenge is a technology challenge. We need the network to be ready to embrace a new wave of technologies and applications that are you know, very demanding in terms of um, uh, network characteristics and features, no? Uh, on the, on the efficiency and uh, profitability and growth, um, the solution comes as a, as a challenge from changing the way networks are built uh, and operated, no? uh, from the traditional way to make them become software uh, platforms. No? Uh, and this is not just a technology challenge, it's also uh, changing the mindset of network operators from, uh, from a network uh, service provider to a digital service provider. Okay, and this means uh, several things. Uh, your network needs to become software-based so that you can uh, manage it uh, um, digitally. And on top of them, of it, you need to be able to deliver digital services digitally. Okay, so there are three aspects, making your network software-based and cloud-based, uh, cloud and then be able to sell in a different way no? uh, to our customers. So some pretty significant challenges, but to your point, Ron Carlos, you share some of those challenges with other industries, so there's some commonality there. I wanted to bring Ehab into the conversation. From Dell's perspective, we're seeing you know, the explosion of data. Every company has to be a data company. We expect yep. to have access to data in real time, if it's a new app, whatever it is. What are some of the challenges that you're seeing from your seat at Dell? Yeah, I think uh, Juan Carlos explained it really well what, what all the operators are talking about here. Between new applications, think metaverse, think video streaming going all the way to the edge, think all the automation of factories and everything that's happening, it's not only requiring a whole new model for delivery and for building networks, but it's throwing out enormous amount of data. And the data needs to be acted on to get the value of it. So, so the challenge is, is how do I collect the data? How do I catalog it? How do I make it usable? And then how do I make it persistent? So, you know, it's high performance data storage. And then after that, how do I move it to where I want to and be able to use it? And for many applications, that has to happen in milliseconds for the value to come out. So, now we've seen this before with enterprise, but now I would say this digital transformation is happening 
at very large scale for all the telcos and uh, starting to deal with very familiar themes we've seen before. So what Carlos said, uh, Telefonica, you, you hear from partners, vendors, that they've done this before, don't worry, you're in good hands. Yeah, yeah. But as a practical matter, when you look at the challenges that you have and you think about the things you'll do to address them as you move forward, what are the, what are the immediate short-term priorities okay. versus the longer-term priorities? What's realistic? You have, you have a network to operate. Yeah. You're not just building something out of nothing. So you have to keep the lights on yeah. and you have to innovate. We call that, by the way, in the CTO trade, uh, ambidextrous yeah. management yeah. using exactly. both hands. So, so what's your order of priorities? Well, uh, the first thing, new technologies you are getting into the network need to come with um, a, a digital shape. So being cloud native, uh, working on, on uh, by software, no? Uh, on the legacies that you need to keep uh, alive, uh, you need to go for a program to switch them off uh, progressively, okay? In fact, in Spain, we are going to switch up the copper network in two years. So, uh, in 2024, Telefonica will celebrate 100 years, and the celebration will be switching off the copper network, and we'll have on the fixed access only fiber, okay? So, modernizing the network is necessary. Uh, all this digitalization may happen only on the new technologies, because the new technologies are uh, uh, cloud-based, cloud-native, become already ready for this digitalization process. Uh, and not only that, so you need also to build new things. Um, we need an abstraction layer on top of the physical infrastructure to be able to manage the network by software. Okay? This is something that happened in the computing world, okay? where the servers you know, were uh, covered with a cloud stack uh, uh, layer. And we are doing the same thing in the network. We are trying to abstract the network uh, services and capabilities and be able to offer them digitally to our customers. Uh, and this is a process that we are ongoing with many initiatives in the market. So one was the Camara uh, community that was opened in Illions Foundation. And the other one was the announcement we made yesterday of the Open Gateway Initiative uh, here at Mobile World Congress, where all telecom operators have agreed to launch in this year a set of service APIs that are common uh, worldwide, okay? This is a, a similar thing to what we did with uh, 2G 35 years ago. So agree on a standard way of delivering a service, and in this case, it's digital services based on APIs. What's, what's the net result of, what, what are the benefits of having those open standards? Is it a benefit that, that myself as a consumer would enjoy? It seems, I mean, I've been, I'm, I'm, I'm old enough to remember you know, a time before cellular telephones, yeah. and I remember a time when it was very, very difficult to travel from North America to Europe exactly. with a cell phone. Now, I land and my provider says, hey, welcome. Yes. Welcome, we're going to charge you a little extra money, and I say, hallelujah, awesome. <laughs> so, is, is part of that interoperability a benefit to consumers, or? or how yes, would... you touched the right point. So in the same way you travel anywhere, and you want to still make a call and send an SMS and connect to the internet, you would like your applications in your smartphone to work, being them edge applications, okay? And these applications, edge applications will have to, to, work, to be executed very close to where you are. In a way that if you travel abroad, the visited network is serving you, okay? So this means that we are somehow extending the current interconnection and roaming agreements between operators to be able also to deliver uh, edge applications wherever you are, uh, in whatever network with whatever technology. We have that expectation at, on the consumer side that it's just going to work no matter where we are. We want apps to be updated whether I'm banking or I'm shopping for groceries. I want to make sure that they, they know who I am, the data's got to be there, it's got to be real time, yeah. it's got to be right, it's got to serve me personally, but it just has to work. You guys talked about some of the big challenges, but also the opportunities in terms of the future of networking the data, turning companies into data companies. Walk us through the future of networking from Telefonica's lens. You talked about some of the big initiatives that you have by 2024, yes. but if you had a crystal ball and you could look in there and go, it looks like this for operators, what would you say? And I'd love to get your feedback too. Yeah, I, uh, I liked how uh, Juan Carlos talked about how the future is. I think I want to add one thing to it to say, a lot of times the user is no longer a consumer, it's an automated thing. You know, AI, right. think robots, so a lot of times more and more the usage is happening by some autonomous thing and, and it needs to always connect. And more and more these things are extending to places where 
even cellular coverage doesn't exist today, so you have edge compute show up. So, and when you think about it, the things we, we have to solve as a community here, and this is all the discussions, is number one, how you make it a fully open standard model, so everything plugs and play. More and more, there's so many pieces coming, software, hardware, from different components, and uh, the integration of all of that is probably one of the biggest challenges people want solved. You know, how it's no longer one box you buy from one person and put it away. Now, you have a complex combination of hardware and software. Also, the operational model is very important, and that is one of the areas we're focused on at Dell, is that while the operational model works inside the data centers for certain application for telcos, it looks different when you're out at the cell tower and you're going to have these long extended temperature to ranges and sometimes this may not be inside a cabinet, yeah. maybe outside. And the person servicing it is not an IT technician. Right. This is somebody that needs to know exactly how to plug it to be able to replace equipment quickly and add capacity. Uh, those are just two of the areas. The cloud, making it work like a cloud where it's intuitive, automated, and you can easily add capacity, you can you know, get a lot of monitoring, a lot of metrics. Those are some of the things that we're all solving uh, in this community. Let's talk about exactly how you're achieving this. Telefonica and Dell have been working together for a couple of years, you said before we went live. Talk about, you're doing this. You talked about the challenges, the opportunities. How are you solving them and why with Dell? Okay, well you need uh, to go with the right partners no? to this kind of process of transforming your network into a digital platform. Um, there are big challenges on creating the cloud infrastructure that you need to support uh, the complex uh, functionality a network requires. Uh, and, and I think you need uh, to have with you companies that know about the processors, that know about the hardware, the server, that know about how to make an abstraction of that um, uh, hardware layer so that you can manage that uh, digitally. And, and this is not something any company can do. So you need companies that are very specialized. Telecom operators are changing the way to work. Uh, we work in the past with traditionally with network equipment vendors. Now we need to start working with technology providers, hardware technology providers, with cloud providers, with an ecosystem that is, uh, that is probably wider than what we had in the past. Yes. So I come from a background, I, I call myself a knuckle-dragging hardware engineer sort of guy. So I'm always fascinated by the physical part of this. You have a network, part of that network includes towers that have transmitters, receivers. At the base of those towers, and like you mentioned, they're not all necessarily in urban areas or easy to access, you have, there's equipment there. Let's say that that tower has been there for five years, 10 years, in the traditional world of IT, we have this, this concept of the refresh cycle, yeah. where a server may have a useful life of 36 months before it's consuming more power than it should based on the technology. What, how do you move from uh, kind of a legacy, more proprietary, all-inclusive stack to an open system? I mean, is this a, okay, we're planning for an outage for the tower, and you're wheeling out old equipment and wheeling in new equipment. Yeah. I mean, that's not that's that's what we say is a non-trivial exercise. Yes. It's something that isn't. You, it, it, it's it's not something that's just easy to do. But is that is that is that what pro progress looks like, sort of methodically, one site at a time? Yeah. Well, I mean, you have touched an important point. No, in the technology renewal cycles you were taking a, 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 an appliance and replacing that by another one. Now, uh, in the, with the current technology, you have to couple the hardware from the software, and the hardware, you, can, you need to replace it only when you run out of processing capacity to yep. do what you want, okay? So then, we'll be there two, three, four, five years, whatever. When you need additional capacity, you replace it. But on the software, software side, you can make the replacement every hour, every week. And this is, this is something that the new technologies are bringing, a flexibility for the telecom operator to introduce a new feature without having to be physically yep. there in the place, okay, by software remotely. And uh, this is the kind of software network we want to build. 
And yeah, I want to add to that if I can. Please. I think yeah. this is one of the biggest benefits of the open model. If you, if the stack is all integrated as one appliance, when a new technology, we all know how quickly silicon technology comes out, and we, now we have GPUs coming out for AI more increasingly. In an appliance model, it may take you two years to take advantage of some new silicon that just came out. In this new open model, yeah. as Mark Carlos was saying, you just swap out, you know, you have time to market, CPUs launched, it can be put out there at the cell tower, yeah. and it could double capacity instantly. And we're going to need that in that world that increasingly going to be AI enabled. Right. So. so my last question to you, we only got a, a minute left or so, is but given everything that we've talked about, the challenges, the opportunities, what you're doing together, how would you, Juan Carlos, summarize how the business is benefiting from the Dell partnership and the technologies that you're enabling with this, this new future network? Well, um, as I said before, um, we will need um, to be able to cover um, um, all the characteristics and performance of our network. We will need the right kind of processing capacity uh, the right uh, kind of hardware solutions. Uh, we know that uh, the functionality of the network is a very demanding one. We need hardware acceleration, we, ne we need a, a synchronization, we need uh, uh, time-sensitive uh, solutions, and all these can only be done by hardware. So you need a, you need a good hardware partner no? that, that ensures that you have the processing capacity you need to be able then to, to, to run your software you know, with the confidence that it will work and with the performance that you need. That confidence is key. Well, it sounds like what Telefonica and Dell have achieved together has been quite successful. Congratulations on the first couple of years. Sounds like it's really helping Telefonica's business move in the strategic direction that it wants. We appreciate you joining us on the program today, describing all this. Thank you both so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, this was A fun. Pleasure. Thank Good. you. Good, our <laughs> pleasure. For our guests and for Dave Nicholson and Lisa Martin, you're watching theCUBE live, day two from Barcelona, MWC 23. Don't go anywhere, Dave and I will be right back with our next guests.